concept attainment model supports students' inductive thinking by helping them to understand the process through which concepts are formed. It's based on the work of Jerome Broner and his associates in their highly publicized work, A Study of Thinking. Before you begin implementing this Before you begin implementing this strategy, you want to define a concept that you can clearly define with several specific attributes. Once you've identified that concept, you want to make a list of positive and negative examples. So your positive examples would be those things that will fall directly under the big umbrella of that concept. Then you want to provide negative examples. So those are things that would directly violate the given criteria that would just not fit. So they can be complete opposites or they can just be unrelated to the specific concept. It's possible that your examples and non-examples can also belong to the same group. For example, if you're teaching the concept fruit, you may be using apples as your example. And then you would list different types of apples. Those would be your positive examples. You'd have your Granny Smith, you'd have your red apples, you'd have your gala apples. And then for non-examples, you might have grapes, um, bananas, so fruits that are not apples. When presenting this model to students, I would not advise you to say to your class, hey guys, we're doing the concept attainment model today because that means nothing to them. But what you might want to do and what my students have responded to, you might want to say, hey, we're going to play a game. Can you guess the mystery word? And the mystery word, of course, would be the concept that you want them to attain. I'm going to give you another non-example. Okay. Do you want to add or take anything away from your guest list? So we have substance, water, something hard, freezing, liquid, gases. Examples of our mystery word are plasma, ice, and water. Non-examples, sunlight, space, and sound. What do our examples have in common? How are they different from the non-examples? Okay. I'm going to add some of those things you said to the list. So, you said ice is packed together. You said vibrates. Melt. All right, I'm going to give you one more example and then one more non-example. And let's see if you can guess what the mystery word is. So your last example is air. Can 
Do you know what plasma is? I think it's found in the. I think it's found. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think it's found in the ocean. What about air? You didn't say you can touch air. Are you saying that you can't? Wait, I don't think you can touch air. Alright, I want you to do something for me. I want you to take your hands and hold them out to your side. I want you to flap your arms really, really fast. What do you feel? Air? You feel the air around you. So, can you touch air? Definitely. It's very small. You can't see it. But you're touching it all the time. So, if all of the examples have something in common, they all have the same, all the examples, they fit the same criteria. So, what's true for one is true for all. So, if we, we just deduce that you can touch air, you can touch water, you can touch ice, and even though we don't know what plasma is, it's under the examples column, and it's true for the other three, so I can touch plasma as well. So, for all of the examples, one of the traits is that we can touch them. And so that means for the non-examples, the opposite must be true. I can't touch them. So, the mystery word is something that I can touch. So I can add that to my list. I can touch it. With that said, if you had to now take those individual files, solid, liquid, and gases, and put them in a drawer, and you label the drawer, what would the name on the drawer be? Okay. I'm learning from chemistry, so I think it's safe.